say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn. Kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in the farmer's kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate. Right here in Farmer's Kitchen, in town Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're gonna cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen. We're on our annual 127 yard sale. That's right, I love it. What'd you find? I found a puppy. Can we have him? No. Okay. Because it's Kelly's. She's okay. behind the camera. That's, this is Schnicker Schnauzer's. His name is Chaplin. I call him all kinds of names. He just got out of the doctor's yeah, office because he baby. ate something he shouldn't have eaten. So Who only knows this. what it is? But we do this every year. Right. The 127 yard sale to see what treasures we can find for the kitchen. Right. Or for whatever. Fun. And he came along because he's, he's been a good boy. That's right. Speaking of dogs, yes. Have you ever seen the dogs that work the sheep, the border collies, yeah. smart animals? Right. right. You know what? We did a segment recently in Nelson County. Okay. With border collies. Oh wow. Amazing animals, amazing smart animals. But okay. I'm I'm starving. So am I. Let's talk about lasagna Yum. later. Yum. Yum. Uh, we're going to be thirsty at the end of the day. We've, we've got right. a drink for you, have a little music for you. Wow. Put lasagna on the Dutch oven. Oh, wow. Like you've never had it before. With could... some garlic bread. Sounds good can to me. Can you dig it? Sounds good to me. Well, let's go see what we can find All right, he's ready to... yard sale. And now let's go to Nelson County and visit with Alan and his border collies. Okay. Alan Miller. Hey, sir. Nelson County. On your beautiful farm here this morning. You know, I've been looking to do a show like this for a long time. I'm, I've got a small farm. I've got Katahdins. I've got some cattle. But what I don't have, now I've got Pyrenees to, to watch out for these animals and to, to be the guard dog. But what I don't have are these cool dogs that you have. What kind of dogs do you have? These are Border Collies. Smartest dog in the world, maybe? The smartest dog in the world and the greatest herding dog, in my opinion, in the world. How did you get involved with these dogs? 1954, my dad was in Eastern Kentucky. He saw a little black and white dog taking about 25 Holstein cows up a hill. And he just saw a gravel road. He turned up that gravel road. That dairyman was there and he said, can that dog do that every time? He says he does it twice a day, seven days a week, and he'll do it until he until he dies. Wow. He said, where do I get me one of those? He came home with a spayed female and a, and a six week old pup. So at some point uh, growing up, you had to see this and were familiar with this. Did you begin to train dogs when you were younger? When did this interest take hold with you? I really trained my first dog when I was about 30, 31 years old. And then I told my dad one day, I said, I think I'm gonna to go to Shorter, Alabama and run in a sheepdog trial. And he said, oh, you don't wanna do that. But I did, and the worst thing happened was I won the first trial that I, that I participated in, and then I trialed for eight or 10 years. My dad found out quickly that it is better to show off your dogs and show off the breed of Border Collies because people at least give you a little gas money and give you a free piece of apple pie. And so he started doing demonstrations, probably about 1956. So this has been a, part, a big part of your life. This is, this is a big part of my life. Okay, let's talk about the history of, of these dogs themselves. Um, where did it start? Border Collie, border of Scotland and England. They had dogs to work probably 400 years ago. At the turn of the century, of the 19th century, they started registering these dogs. And the British are responsible for Herefords and Angus and all the sheep breeds and Suffolk, so why wouldn't they have the greatest stock dog as well? 
Well, the basic simplistic idea of what happens is, okay, you've got your dairy cattle or you have your sheep out grazing in, in a large field. The more you have, the bigger your field has to be. Meanwhile, you got this little guy with four-wheel drive who can do everything you need to do. How much training is involved and how much of it is it natural ability? It's 90% natural ability. They got it in them. And it's 10% training. They're easier, their drive to work. They need a job. They need a job. Right. Now, training a dog, training a young dog, what, at what point do you start? Well, really, we've got a puppy on the porch right now. It's 10 weeks old. It's learning its name, it's learning to behave, it's learning to submit to our authority. At nine or 10 months old, we start to go into more formal training. Uh, here's the greatest thing. Only 10% of the people in this world can really train a dog like that should be, but 90% of the people can take a Border Collie and be able to get it to do what they need it to do because of its wonderful, natural ability. And they want to please you. They want to work for you, not for themselves. All right, what are some basic commands? I use voice, I use a whistle, so I can communicate with them at distances. You need to stop your dog. And of course, I like a higher level of training, so all my dogs know they're clockwise and counterclockwise. We call that steering. And because they want to control the stock, not only can we gather stock, but we can also drive stock in any direction that we, that we please. Uh -huh. Sometimes you only want them to move from six o'clock to nine o'clock, so we just shorten our whistle. I have a southern drawl, so I have to shorten up my command so it's a little bit choppier. And they are so smart. It is just unbelievable. Once they do a job, they sort of have it memorized. This is, this is hard when you're doing uh, exhibitions at the state fair because the dogs know what I'm going to say before I say it, and it makes it look like I'm not really in control. So uh, maybe I'm not really in control, and they're the ones that are in control. But they're such a wonderful, breed of dog. Just smart, just the intelligence. You look in their eyes and you see kind of beyond, you know, they, they, they're just sharp. So I'm going to stand back. I'm going to let you go through your rounds. Are we doing the cattle first? Or yeah, I've got, to, I've got to turn these cattle out of this field. Okay. We'll, we'll go get Joe and we'll see if we can uh, just drive the cows out of the field and then we'll, we'll, we'll see what else we can get into. Sounds like a plan. Come by, come by. Get up. Come by, come by. Get up, Joe, come on. We, 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 there. Walk, walk, get up, Joe, walk, 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 walk. That'll do, good boy. We're gonna take these sheep, move them up the field. Sonny, walk up, walk up. This is what we call driving. Walk up, walk up. Walk, 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 walk. Lie down. The little short whistles telling me to walk up. That's counterclockwise. Walk up, walk up. If I need, to walk, if I need him to go uh, clockwise, Stopping, to call him back home. It's remote control. <laughs> and then the most fantastic thing that makes the, that sets the Border Collie apart, in my opinion, from all the rest of the dogs, is his ability to run out and fetch back. Stand there, come by. And now he's going to bring them back. Sonny's 10 years old, so he brings them in nice and calmly. 
We do this every night. We put our sheep up for coyote what a protection. Way, 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 way. All right, this whole thing's fascinating to me. And to see these dogs do what they're supposed to do. They can't help it, but you can help them by giving them a little direction. Like you say, 90% of us inborn, but then the 10% training is absolutely necessary. Correct. You're doing a good job here, and I appreciate you taking time out of your day to spend it with us. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Have you done enough shopping? I have. I'm it's burnt. hot, isn't it? Yes, it is. Are you hungry? I'm starving. How hungry are you? I could eat anything. You know what? <laughs> We've started making lasagna. Now, there's lasagna and there's lasagna. That's right. You can put anything between those layers that you want. Yeah. It doesn't have to be just hamburger. So many people put just hamburger right. and tomato sauce. Ours is more like a pizza lasagna. Yummy. And it's good. Let's I'm go ready. to the house. I'm and ready. Eat. You, want, you want some lasagna? Let's let him answer. I knew you did. It's hot today. We just finished 127 yard show. Yes, we did. And we almost bought nothing, but at the last moment, you bought some stuff. We don't want to talk about it. No. I really needed it, though. Yeah, we needed that. But uh, Chaplin, who's sitting back here, had a good time. He made a lot of friends. And he knows food falls right here. Yes. That's why he's sitting here. Um, we got our little stove going. I absolutely love this thing. I right like here. it, too. You know, I have taken our meat. Now, we said we're going to do lasagna. Now, why make a lasagna that's just bland? Right. Why make a lasagna? We just had some lasagna with friends and it was good. She made good lasagna. All right, we're gonna pump it up a notch here. This is something that we do out here. And let me tell you, there's some old wives' tales about any kind of cast iron cookware. A lot of people say you can't use tomatoes in cookware, lodge cookware. Yes, you can. Now, there is some truth to that. If you haven't got a seasoned pan, which this one is well seasoned, yes, then, use a lot. then you don't want to do that. You don't want to use it right off the bat, fill it up with some kind of citrus juice right. or, or acid or anything like that. Now, if you have a seasoned, very seasoned one like we have, we use? you're absolutely fine. Now, we're going to layer tomato sauce in here, and here's what we've already done. We've started, look at this. You know it what that is? Yummy. Now, why have, some people just have hamburger. It's not good. We can pump it up a notch. Now, you remember our segment? Now, I, I like to look back on our segments and take things that we've done from each thing. Right. Remember Vito's? Delicious. We love their sausage. Now, this was the robust. We want flavors. It's perfect. It's perfect. Now, the thing about your lasagna, you don't have to have just the plain old, regular, run-of-the-mill lasagna with just hamburger. Right. We actually took, now we didn't have any of, of the actual ground stuff that they do, so we actually took the sausages, the rob robust mm -hmm. ones, and we skinned those little fellers, right, to put them off. out in here, took the casings off, and we did two pounds of those. So it cooks up a little bit, and here's what we've got. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, the fact that we've got some charcoal here. I don't like all that pre-lit stuff. Right. We used it sometimes in an emergency, but I don't like the, the chemicals, the harsh chemicals in some of those things. These are charcoal starters that people use for big green egg. There's no chemicals you in them. You love those, don't you? You can set them right in your lump charcoal and be ready to go. That's what we did with this. It was a fairly quick start. It's almost as quick as doing it with, with lighter fluid, right. except you don't have all those harsh chemicals. All right, so our meat, and there's gonna be a lot of meat in this. Yummy, I like meat. So we're just gonna build this in this 12 inch pan right over here. It goes pretty quickly. And, and I know she didn't even cook your noodles, so you're just gonna fill those in. Noodles, it's we're gonna camping. Be, it's gonna be very wet. Okay. Um, you, If you wanted to boil them a little bit, you could, Yeah. but you don't have to do that. The great thing about the charcoal that's already going in there, I can take that out and use that on my 12 inch pan and our bread. We're gonna revisit our bread that we did a while back. Need bread. In our 10 inch pan. Right. Gotta have some garlic bread with that. All right, Mrs. Farmer, what's your egg for? I like this. This is a chicken egg that I got right out of our coop today. Yay. Mm. I like to put it in the ricotta cheese. I think most people do that. You just kind of mix it up in that a little bit. Makes it a little, that's perfect. You gotta have ricotta cheese. If oh, you absolutely. Lasagna. And you gotta have fresh chicken egg in there. Now, since everything in here is moist, we're gonna start the first layer and we're just gonna kind of break these to fit the pan. All right. I like to put ricotta on the noodles. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Spread it out on there a little bit. All right, now, this is our homemade, and yes, you can make this yourself. You can make pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce. This is meatless because we come back with our meat later. And we will have this on the show very soon to show you how you can make your own. And this is our, I would call this our robust recipe. 
Now we're gonna come back with some meat. We're gonna take some pepperonis and put them here. Now, what are the rules of cooking? Nothing. There are no rules. <laughs> Whatever you find wonderful. We like things to taste really, really, well, robust. We're using that word a lot. You can go ahead and put that on there if you, you want. You put the cottage cheese on? Cottage right. cheese. Gotta have cottage cheese. Gotta have every kind of cheese there is. A little black olive. Anything you want to do. It's really gonna notch it up a flavor. Mushrooms. And we're gonna start over with another layer. Yep. And then I'm gonna come back All right. with sausage on the next round. Now again, this is the robust. Let's, yeah. And I left that in big chunks because I like to taste that in there. Now, what else would you like? You need a little more sauce. A little more mushrooms? No, oh, this is not going to be good. The mozzarella. The mozzarella. Our favorite store makes this fresh. He's not spoiled or anything. <laughs> He's waiting for lasagna. Chaplin, are you hungry? Are oh, you hungry? Baby. Got our two Dutch ovens going. We got our 12 and our 10 because we got some bread. Yum. And remember to refer back to some of the stuff we've done before. We don't want to repeat it every time, right. but man, I'm telling you what. So we're going to let that go for about an hour. Okay. So while we wait, we got a little bit of daylight left. Wouldn't you like to hear some music? I would like some music. All right, Thumb Picking is a Western Kentucky Merle Travis Ike Everly, Eddie Pennington. Right. You know, we're yeah. talking the, the, the greats here. Pat Kirtley. There's so many people in Kentucky do that. But a 16-year-old kid. He was amazing. In the UK? Yeah. So he says, I'm coming over to Nashville in such and such amount of time. And I said, when you get here, you call me. So his mom brought him up. Sweet lady. Sat down in the edge of the music room and picked a song that I've heard somewhere before. <laughs> Let's meet Connor Thomas. Connor Thomas. Is in the, the uh, I guess we call us the music room today. Today is the music room. You've come here from? England, UK, which, Northern. Which part? A uh, place called Newcastle. This cat right here loves music that's about my age. So it's really old, is what I'm saying. How in the world did a 16 year old guy get involved in like thumb picking, which is from the western part of the state? It had its roots right here in the western part of Kentucky. How'd you get involved in thumb picking? Um, I started listening to The Shadows and they made a lot of references to Chad Atkins and um, I discovered Chad Atkins just by complete chance and through him I discovered other artists like Tommy Manuel who, Tommy Manuel has such a wide spectrum of genres that you, you can't help but listen to other people as well as him. This kid has style, he has grace and he has the music in him. You, you looked up on the wall and saw a picture of Frank and show me what you did there. <laughs> Fly Me To The Moon, one of my favourite songs. That's your arrangement. You know what? I want to thank you for keeping the old good music alive and bringing it back. You know, we were so worried about, and a lot of us are, are worried about that kind of music going by the wayside. Here in the States, we'll hear some Chet Atkins music on a grass seed commercial. And we're like, ooh, that's a good song. And kids even pick up on it and say, that's got a great backbeat, but it's not mainstream today. So I'm depending on you and Parker. <laughs> to kind of carry in, in Tommy's footsteps and the folks out in Western Kentucky who are still doing this. And I want to thank your mom for bringing you over here. you got a great mom. So uh, would you play us a few more today? Yeah, sure. All right, man. This song's called Cannibal Rag.
We've almost lost our light, our natural light. It's cooled down though, I like it. It has cooled down. What do you smell? I smell something good and yummy. Lasagna <laughs> and bread. That's what I'm talking about. I can smell it. You know what? Uh, it's been hot. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you need a refreshing drink. Oh, yeah. Let's mix one up. Alex Styles is back. I am. Thanks it, for having me. Well, thanks for being here, but it is genuinely 70,000 degrees. I agree with that. <laughs> so what happens when it's 70,000 degrees? You must have a drink. I do. I have the perfect drink for what a hot got? day. This is called South of the Bluegrass. All right. So it's going to be tequila based, so similar to a margarita, but I put a little twist on it. You know what? I see fresh blackberries. You do. I see fresh oranges. oranges. I like where you're going. Go ahead. So, all see right. see what you're doing here. We're going to start. Get your shaker full of ice. All right. You can muddle, but your blackberries and your oranges, but I'm just gonna throw them in the shaker and it'll be All effectively right. the same thing. So get your blackberries and your orange. You'll get one and a half ounces of tequila. So this is shaken, not stirred, right? Precise. Just like James Bond. That's exactly right. <laughs> Gonna do a half ounce of a blackberry liqueur of your choice. This one's clear. If you want it to be a darker color, you can get this blackberry schnapps gotcha. that has a color to it. So about half an ounce of that. Half an ounce of triple sec to make sure it's sweetened up. All right. Now, is this fairly new? Is this something you learned recently, or is this, a, this is an older recipe? This is something I did recently. So this Just is yours. It. This is mine. This is yeah, yours. This is my now that's recipe. cool, right there. <laughs> That was a splash of orange juice in there. All right. Give it a good shake. Make sure the blackberries get muddled in there. You also look really cool while you do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna get your glass filled up with ice. Pour what you have there. And then you will top it off with a ginger ale type soda. Make it look pretty, garnish it off with some blackberries and a slice of orange. This is Alex's South of the Bluegrass. Very nice. Thank you. Summertime. Oh, wow. Here we go. This is going to be a beautiful thing. Oh, ho, ho. Yum. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's not going to be good. That's delicious. My saliva glands are just flowing. You get the first bite. I do. Okay. Oh, wow. This looks amazing. Now, again, why, why should you let anything be just mediocre or bland? Mm. I got a banana pepper. What's in your sauce? You know what? Wow. Speaking of tomato sauce. You've seen us plant our basil, oregano, we have right. rosemary on the back porch. You know, you harvest that, you put it in there fresh. Okay. Basil pesto, you can even take your basil pesto and put it in your tomato sauce like we did. And yeah. we'll show you our own personal marinara pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce, whatever you want to call it. This is delicious, yeah, it did yourself. Amazing. I could eat every bit of that. Yeah, you wouldn't think camping, you wouldn't think about making lasagna. I mean, that was so simple. It's so easy. Yeah. I mean, we have done hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shows and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of recipes. If you'd like to look at our shows, our recipes, timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. They're on YouTube. Also, go to Tim Farmer's Country Kitchen Facebook page and like it and tell all your friends about it. we got a bunch of folks from all over the place. We're loving talking to them, sharing recipes, telling them stories. It's now time to turn off the camera and go cro magnon on this plate of food. Sounds good to me. Because <laughs> basically it's all about good times, good friends, and good eats. See you next week on Tim Lowe's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook or DVD of the show, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com. Special thanks to 
CKY, Canoe, Kentucky. Furniture World Superstore. Housewarmings. Lodge Cast Iron. Tater Knob Pottery and Farm. 